I'm excited to share some highlights from our new Survey CTO 2.40 release. This release includes a few major platform improvements, as well as a series of smaller refinements, all in response to requests from our growing worldwide user base. So thank you to everybody for the wonderful feedback and ideas that have made this release possible. The biggest thing about 2.40 is the addition of a new review and correction workflow. For the past five years, we've gotten steadily better at helping you to quickly and effectively identify potential problems in your incoming data. In just the last year, for example, we introduced the Data Explorer, which helps you to review incoming data both at the aggregate and at the individual level, respond to warnings from automated quality checks, inspect photos and listen to audio audits, and more. But as easy as we've made it to review incoming data, we've never made it particularly easy to annotate or correct that data. But now we have. We've also expanded the range of options you have for collecting and mapping GPS data, made some key case management improvements, and refined several aspects of the Survey CTO Administration Console. In this release, we've also added literally dozens of other smaller improvements, from new math functions for informed calculations, to new preview options for enterprise administrators who are managing users and user roles. To show you the new review and correction workflow, I'm going to start here on the monitor tab of my Survey CTO server console, where my incoming data comes in and I can get a first look at it. If I scroll down to the form submissions and data set data section, you can see that I have this sample household listing form here. I have the option to monitor form data as I, as I have in prior releases. I could purge data, look up data by unique key. And I have a new option here for review workflow. I'm going to go ahead and click that. We can see that there's a checkbox here to enable the review and correction workflow. By default, all survey CTO forms that you create uh, start out as they always have, where data that comes in is in some sense auto-approved as it arrives. If you've configured publishing to an external dashboard or some external system, uh, data that would come in would publish directly out to those other systems. Uh, people downloading, exporting data for analysis would see that data right away. I'm going to go ahead and check this box now, though, for this form. And once I have, what happens is that new submissions that come in are held for review and have to be either approved or rejected before they're passed along for data analysis or published to external systems. I'm going to go ahead and say OK there. And I'm going to just pause for a few moments here so that my colleagues can submit some data. OK, my colleagues have submitted data. And I've just gone ahead and refreshed my Survey CTO Server Console. So you can see now that I have some alerts here. If I click, it says that there's data awaiting review two submissions for this sample household listing form. If I click on the alert, it'll go ahead and scroll me down to the uh, sample household listing form in the monitor tab. And I can see now that there's this new yellow panel that says that there's new data awaiting review. And importantly, that these two submissions have not been approved or released yet for publishing or export. We'll go ahead and click the Review Now button to review that data goes into the Data Explorer, and because this particular form was encrypted using my own public-private encryption keys, I have to select the private key in order to be able to decrypt that data here in my browser. So you can see here now I'm in the Data Explorer where I can look at the uh, submissions uh, details uh, just like before, but there's this new yellow bar up top which has options to approve, reject, correct, or comment on the submission. You can see that I can also uh, scroll over to the uh, second submission here. And I can view these submissions in detail. So for example, I can uh, zoom in on the individual maps in order to see where the data was collected. Uh, if there are photos available as part of the submission, I can also open those photos in place uh, to look at those. If there's a text audit uh, information, I can show the uh, details about when the different questions uh, were asked and how much time was spent on each question. And so these are all standard features of the 
uh, Data Explorer. But now if I notice something uh, that makes me uh, concerned that there's a problem with the data, uh, then I can uh, go ahead and intervene and make corrections. So for example, if I go over to this first submission, one thing that I noticed is that uh, the last name of the respondent was Jane. And I might have some reason to believe that that was actually meant to be James. So I click this little pencil icon and it shows me the raw data and I can correct it and say James and I can save that. You can see now that I have a save changes button up here. As always we try to allow you to work uh, offline as much as possible even when you're using your web browser in case your internet connection is, uh, is not quite that reliable or is going in and out. Uh, so uh, I've gone ahead and made this change but I haven't uh, saved it to the server yet. Um, I can also make comments and uh, so here I'll say uh, believe that uh, S was missing from last name. Just save that comment. And so this comment is a, a little bit like uh, in Google Docs or Google Sheets, just in the sidebar here, uh, comments will, uh, will accumulate as different people uh, make comments on the submission. So I'm going to say that I don't see anything else uh, wrong with this submission, and I'm going to go ahead and approve it. So it asks me if I want to confirm. I'll say yes. Another comment was added to the thread just to indicate that I had approved the submission. So anytime there's a, uh, a change to the approval status of a submission, that'll also be logged in the, the comment thread. I'm going to go uh, here to the next submission. I don't have a lot of reason to do this, but just for example uh, purposes, I'm going to go ahead and reject this one. Submission rejected. So now I'm going to go ahead and save changes. Just one thing I'd like to point out is that um, this was an encrypted form and the changes, the corrections that I make to the data uh, once when I'm reviewing it, those changes to the data themselves could be very sensitive. And so actually all of the corrections that uh, I'm making here in the Data Explorer are then actually being encrypted and sent to the server in an encrypted bundle. Uh, so that still nobody on the server who doesn't have the uh, private key is able to uh, decrypt that corrected data. So I'll show you now how this data looks if we go back to the uh, server console. So now if I refresh, I can see that there are no longer any submissions that are awaiting review. I can see that there are two submissions that are complete and that one of them has been approved. I go over to the export tab, I go down to uh, my data, I can see again that I have two complete submissions here. If I say that I'd like to download the data, note there's a note here that says that not all submissions have been approved for export. And by default, we only export approved submissions. But note that that rejected submission, I could still export that if I chose to. But here I'm just going to uh, export approved submissions in uh, wide format. I'm going to say that I want to download my data now. Again, I'm going to have to select my private key to decrypt the data in order to export it. So note here that I've been given both the wide format CSV file with the raw data, but I've also been given a correction log CSV file. This is a, uh, a full audit trail of all of the corrections made to the data that's here in the CSV file. So let me show you what that uh, looks like in the data. So our wide format data looks pretty much like it usually does when you export from SurveyCTO. Uh, all of the raw data is here in various columns. Um, the data is uh, as it was corrected. So for example, the respondent name here, we can see that there is an S on the end of James all of the corrections will have been applied to the data as it's exported, also as it's published out to Google Sheets or through webhooks or downloaded through APIs. Uh, all of the corrections that were made to the data will be reflected uh, as it's published or exported. We've also added a few extra columns to the export. So for example, review comments. 
So this column captures all of the comments that were made as part of that review process, including that uh, initial comment that I made uh, manually and also the comment that was automatically added when I approved the submission. There's also a note here about all of the fields that were corrected and who made those corrections and when. And this is important so that people know that they're looking at data not exactly as it came in, but as it was corrected. If I flip over to that correction log CSV file, we can see an additional level of detail. So here for every single correction that was made as part of this data set, as part of the review process, we can see which submission was corrected, which field, what the old value was, how it was corrected, what the new value was, and who did it and when they did it. So each and every correction made to each and every submission as part of this data set will be reflected here in the corrections log file so that you know exactly everything that happened to your data uh, from the point in time that it was uh, came into SurveyCTO, corrected, and then exported again. So this entire review workflow is uh, optional, so any uh, new SurveyCTO forms you create, uh, by default there's no extra uh, review or correction necessary. Data comes in, it flows directly out uh, to outside systems, to your exports, but if you choose to enable this review and corrections workflow, you do have the option to, uh, to make corrections to your data, comment on the data, and then see all of that reflected uh, in the exports. For more about the other improvements in this release, please check out our other videos in this series. And, of course, if you haven't already, you can always update for free. Just go to our website, log in to manage your subscription, and click the green button to update now. And thank you for using SurveyCTO.